in this lecture, uh, we discuss Vanity Fair by Thackeray uh, from another angle uh, than the one that we uh, used uh, for the previous lecture. And uh, uh, I refer to uh, the period of regency when the person was born, uh, uh, Thackeray, and uh, he also writes about that period in, in this uh, particular <coughs> novel, Vanity Fair. So, uh, actually, uh, as, as, I, as, I, as I said earlier, uh, if you want to know about England uh, in, in, the, in the second decade of the 19th century, then the best thing to do is to read this novel, because it is about that period of Regency. Uh, I, I, I would explain Regency a little more. Literally, Regency period is when the king is unable to rule and a prince rules in his name. In England, the period between the 1811 and 1820, the Prince of Wales was regent during George III's period of insanity. So, these 10 years were quite important and uh, were they also important for India? Because uh, uh, Britishers were a powerful force in India as, as colonizers, as, as, as runners of the uh, East India Company. And you would find that uh, this is a very creative period for India also, the, the, this Regency period. And, uh, you know, for instance, uh, Vanity Fair, uh, the writer of the Vanity Fair is born in Calcutta and uh, he is born to uh, a, an official of uh, East India Company. And uh, then, you know, th th this writer. Uh, it also expresses uh, uh, it, through his sensibility the vitality of the period in which he was born and this period is taken up seriously, uh, is taken up for depiction in this novel. And uh, you will know that uh, everybody is educated, everybody is well read, uh, everybody is uh, pungent, Every, uh, some people are in it, you know, who are vain, who are arrogant and all of them, you know, live a life different from the life that was lived in the colony that they ruled. So, uh, <coughs> this period is picked up in this novel. The time was marked by great socio-political and economic changes and those changes also occurred in India in the sense, you know, that uh, British policies were being, uh, you know, formed for keeping India, uh, uh, formed with the keeping India in mind at that time and uh, you know that uh, a kind of modernism modern outlook, modern ideas, modern values, that modernism set in in India also. Uh, the, in this particular period that this the novel depicts also is the period of the beginning of social reforms in India and uh, you know company officials who came uh, with their families and uh, you know uh, uh, English language was introduced in a systematic manner in, the, in, in, in this period and uh, you know English literature was made available to people in India. And, uh, you know, uh, that English literature uh, had a large chunk of romantic poetry in it and that romantic poetry also started a kind of a trend in Indian writing uh, in, in the early part of the 19th century. All this, that is at the background of the uh, framework of this novel. This novel is about England at the same time as they are becoming powerful policy makers in the country of their, uh, country of, of their rule that, that, that they are, you know, uh, <coughs> at that point I'm maintaining. The later works of this person include Pendennis, uh, Bildung Roma, presenting the growth of the character of Arthur Pendennis, alter ego of Thackeray. So, uh, he writes this novel, uh, uh, Pen Pendennis, and this is an autobiographical novel. And there, you know, he's talking about himself. In fact, you, you would re realize that when you read uh, this person's writing, uh, writings in general and this writing in particular, then you will know that there is a kind of sequence. You start learning something about society and uh, that learning is as much your learning, as, as much my learning as it is the learning of the author. So, the author is exploring the period that he has picked up for depiction. So, he is that kind of a writer and you can see buildings Roma uh, in all his writing, but then uh, the writing which is about oneself and uh, one's, one's growth. That, is, that actually is the building, building Roma novel. Thackeray is compared with Dickens, <coughs> both reflect the reality of the 19th century English society. Now, uh, we are getting closer to uh, the, the, the writing of Thackeray and then the writing is compared with Dickens. You know, they are contemporaries, you know, Dickens also is a 19th century writer. Uh, Dickens also uh, talks about uh, people uh, critically, uh, he shows th people in, in their true colors. 
uh, there are differences between Dickens and this person. Dickens is uh, satirical, but he's also humorous. So, but so far this writer is concerned, he is mainly satirical, but not exactly humorous. Uh, uh, there are human beings in both the novels, and uh, in, uh, in one novel that is uh, Vanity Fair, the, the human beings have their weaknesses. In Dickens's case, uh, there is also a kind of uh, goodness about human beings, uh, particularly in the poor people, and uh, that way, uh, even though they are contemporaries and both write about the society of their time, their interests differ. So that is to be kept in mind that so far as reality is concerned, both of them share the reality of the 19th century uh, in their novels, but their attitude is different. So that is to be kept in mind. This will in fact help us understand not only Dickens better, but uh, uh, not only uh, you know Thackeray better, but also Dickens, because the same period is being captured by both of them, and since their angles are different. Uh, Dickens is a, a more ostensibly humanist, and this person is more uh, this this person is more intellectual uh, in his attitude, and he can tell you about the faults and frailties of human beings. So, uh, I would say that both the writers uh, will be very educative uh, in in their influence, and uh, both of them share the century. <coughs> now, <coughs> earlier uh, I, I referred to in in, in the previous lecture about uh, one important thing that this person was an illustrator, uh, Thackeray, and uh, that illustration is, is a very important aspect. And uh, in fact, in those days, uh, people liked his illustrations. And uh, I, I refer to illustration, particularly in the context of, uh, uh, you know, not sketching, but even uh, uh, making characters alive on the page. So, uh, let me read a quotation uh, from uh, a, a contemporary woman writer, Charlotte Bronte about Thackeray and uh, his uh, quality of uh, illustrating the, the, the life in England uh, and, and particularly in that life in England which is uh, presented in Vanity Fair. She says, Thackeray's illustration in Vanity Fair, he says about it, you will not easily find a second Thackeray. She likes him the best. There can't be a second Th Thackeray. Nobody else can you know, uh, compare with him in terms of illustrating characters and illustrating the reality of the time. How he can render with a few black lines, dots, shades and expressions so fine, so real, traits of character, so, so minute, so subtle, so difficult to seize and uh, fix. I cannot tell, I can only wonder and admire if truth were again a goddess, Thackeray would be her high priest. This kind of a praise is very difficult to get, uh, but see the words used by uh, uh, Charles Bronte uh, to describe his uh, genius. He, he uses black lines. Black lines uh, uh, literally means uh, that he draws pictures, but black lines of uh, human behavior mean something different. That uh, human be uh, beings, you know, uh, uh, always, you know, go by their personal choices, and those choices are cruel, and then and, and they are to, you know, be fool people. And uh, the, uh, the, the, there is some kind of violence there. So that is hidden in the words, in, 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 in the black dots. She's, she's using the words, you know, very carefully. Black lines so that the human form is shaped. Dots, dots can be uh, uh, shortcomings. Shades and expressions. And expression also can mean so many things. It, it can mean an expression of a face that is painted on the page and expressions can also mean the ideas that one articulates uh, through one's behavior. So fine, so real. Fine means subtle. So fi fine means, you know, that uh, if, you have, uh, if you have to understand things, then you focus upon them, then you think about them, then you compare one with the other and then reach the truth about both. That is so fine, so real. Real means that they are, they are rooted in reality and they, rela we, we, they are relatable. We, we, we can see them in our own case and then we become, you know, awakened in ourselves to understand what exactly is the author meaning. Traits of character. Traits of character. Now, uh, it is a, it's a, uh, a phrase and, and we generally we use it, but what exactly are the traits of characters? Uh, traits of character means? Uh, there is a character, there is a kind of attitude and that attitude is shown through uh, one or two qualities. They are the traits. 
and there is th th there she says that they are so minute so subtle so difficult to seize and fix if you start uh, asking questions uh, like uh, from a critic about this uh, novel as to how this novel appeals to uh, to him or her then that person cannot tell because these things are shown but they they are, they are not uh, expressed through words so she is full of wonder as to how you know this person can create characters in such a manner that you are dumbfounded that that that, that you are you, you are, the, he uh, sh he has cast a spell over you and and you just just do not know what to do except to uh, take the uh, word that he is giving you for description so uh, this is a quotation that will tell you about the power of writing of uh, thackeray in this novel that he uh, characterizes he he presents shades and he is criticizing the society of his time thackeray was a shy and diffident man this is how you know Th thackeray is being described by another person a uh, reserved and very sensitive and we feel that never either on paper or to his friends did he wholly reveal himself he is revealing all the time in his novels but uh, somebody is talking about his personal life and he says that this person was very shy he would not uh, open open up uh, to his friends and to his foes but then uh, he was writing all the time which means that he was a genuine writer he was a writer who would always focus upon his writing he would just sit down in a corner he would observe the uh, phenomena uh, around him and he will capture that phenomena on the paper but when he meets people then he doesn't talk it's a, it's a very different kind of a writer mostly writers you know uh, become very vocal in their in their expressions in their behavior they have a large number of friends and and they celebrate themselves they they they, they celebrate others and they become big figures icons for instance so they 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 are, they are interviewed by lots of people that is not the case with thackeray thackeray is shy thackeray is humble thackeray is gentle but when he writes then he becomes totally different and that is being captured in this thing so vanity fair does not tell you about the man personally it it tells it tells you about his skills it tells you about his attitude it tells you about his values but it doesn't about, uh, tell you about the kind of person that thackeray was thackeray as a human being so that is being uh, pointed out here he was garrulous and wrote diffusively in writing he is garrulous he is talking he is very talkative he constantly made personal instructions into his books so that's what he does so when there are personal instructions they are in the book but they are not there actually in his own behavior he is the most charming of friends and guides through the narrative now he is a guide but through the narrative narrative means the story the story that he tells but something is kept back from us and to the last page there is still an unknown element in the personality of the man who has failed to uh, he who has talked so much about himself and of his books so uh, you you have two personalities one personality that is lived in society and the other personality that reveals itself in his writing and the difference is clear so please keep in mind that when you read vanity fair then you realize that it's a it's an opinion of somebody it's it's not that uh, thackeray is uh, bearing witness to this or that uh, he's not telling that uh, people that he's authentic but he's definitely telling a picture uh, to which we can relate and we can say that that can be a source of understanding for us so this kind of a praise tells us about the story that tells us about the character that that, that is shown in the novel and at the same time that the novel novelist is actually objective dickens showed what he was now there is a comparison between dickens and him the the least percipient and uh, uh, could divine what his opinion would be on any given subject what the mental attitude was to life in general but thackeray was a riddle uh, so far as dickens is concerned is a popular writer everybody loves listening to dickens meeting him uh, dickens writes uh, uh, you know in, in different magazines about him he also describes you know uh, directly uh, to the people uh, through his art the the tendency that that he does, uh, witnesses around himself but that's not the case with this person he will only write he will not tell he was alternately accused of cynicism and sentimentalism at one time he was unfeeling and represented life as worse than it was at another he was inclined to hope too much in human nature 
So, that is about Dickens and uh, Thackeray was actually a riddle. He will not be generally seen in this manner. <coughs> now, this 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 is a long quotation. I am cutting it because uh, th this will take a lot of time. Uh, he is uh, uh, being uh, compared with and contrasted with Dickens and then uh, th there is something uh, gentle about him, about his manners and uh, that is to be kept in mind. But imagine that when you see this contrast, this vision uh, with, with what he says in Vanity Fair, then the gap is quite clear before us. Then we know that the person was genuine outside and inside here he was a critic of the society and there he is unfaltering. Uh, in his in his criticism. Then the point that I particularly want to take up to us this may appear to be a strong indicator of the novel itself. That this is what I am pointing out that such a person is writing about the society of his time which means that he has seen the society and that he is, he is bearing witness to it and is authenticating it by his gentleness. So, he is gentle personally, he is, he is, he is well behaved personally. He is, he is urbane uh, 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 personally, but when it comes to writing, then he finds that these things are missing in the world in which he lives. So, in a way, there is a strong connect between uh, the, uh, the, the, the person that, 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 that is a writer and the writing you know, the, that, that this person shares with us. Look at the way the characters in the novel are sketched. They, they, are, they are presented as totally independent of the uh, uh, writer, they have their own life to live, their, their own you know uh, prejudices to suffer from, and uh, there you know uh, the, the writer is not helping us either uh, one way or, or the other. <coughs> when contemporary critics found Vanity Fair too dark a metaphor for the times, Thackeray responded saying that he saw people for the most part as abominably foolish and selfish. And when he was criticized that, that you know he was not, not holding out any hope, then he said, what can I do? Uh, uh, whatever, whomsoever I see in life, I find that person abominable, uh, worth hating, foolish, because uh, they, there is no wit in them, they, they, they do not understand things. Uh, they, they, they always remain very confident about, about their views, but their, 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 their views are false and then they are self-centered. That is his idea not merely about the characters in the novel. That also is his idea about people in general and uh, actually his characters represent the people uh, in the real world. Is that actually so? Uh, you, you read the novel, uh, you, you read the episodes, you, you see Becky Sharp about whom I uh, you know, talked in, uh, briefly earlier and then you realize that there is a Becky Sharp everywhere in you know, almost all women uh, of England in the 19th century that they are as scheming. And, 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 and they are as intelligent and as wicked as, as Becky Sharp is and uh, in fact the other part is that if you are not scheming, if you are not wicked, if you are not intelligent then you cannot survive in the world. So, Becky Sharp is not actually being criticized in the novel, she is being presented as a figure uh, who is actually a victim of the circumstance uh, that, that, that she has to face. So, if you are not intelligent, how do you understand the 19th century? 19th century which is the, the century of the blind people. Uh, you see she interacts with the one family then with another then, then there is a third set of characters and she is a young woman and she finds that there is not a single person you know worth falling in love with. For instance a young woman, beautiful woman would like to settle down in life in marriage and you know have a family but this woman sees that there is nobody worth you know uh, uh, getting, uh, getting, get, getting along with. Uh, in, in the first place because she is poor, so nobody will think anything about her and uh, as if you know the society uh, is, is made only of the rich people and only rich people can survive and so far as the poor people are concerned, they can go wherever they like, but they will not be accepted. This is the truth of the 19th century and how to say it? Uh, there are many ways of saying it, uh, other, other writers say it in one way, but this person says through. Uh, an apparently wild character, a, a, a vicious character and uh, because the people she is surrounded by are in his words abominably foolish and selfish and when he says this then he says not about uh, one or two people or one or two sections but about the whole society. The 19th century is a, is a society of foolish people and selfish people. 
is he right or wrong this the this is the question uh, that that the novel poses and uh, i think most of us have to agree that 19th century victorian society for instance the, the victorian sensibility is the sensibility of those who are asinine who who are foolish and uh, who all the time mean harm to others and uh, mean you know that uh, they 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 have a kind of superiority which others lack <coughs> the subtitle of the novel was as i said earlier a novel without a hero it has two meanings one one is that uh, there there's no important hero a male male figure who can move around and uh, impress people and the other thing is that actually in the 19th century society heroism is missing that uh, the uh, the, uh, the uh, heroes are not there those those people who can carry people along who who, who can uh, you know become symbols of uh, valor real valor uh, symbols of sympathy as uh, symbol symbols of uh, high attitude those people are not there their missions are not good their missions are not inspiring it's not like those ancient heroes uh, who would you know lead tribes who would lead countries who would uh, you know fight wars in order to realize themselves or to realize ambitions of the society to which they belong that heroism is gone once and for all it might have been there in england in the 17th century it might have been there in england in the 16th century in the 18th century heroism was mock heroism actually and when it came to the 19th century then the society was without a hero so this novel makes this point very sharply that and you say it is this that's the subtitle of the novel vanity fair a colon a novel without a hero so you don't have heroes so hero means action hero means dynamism hero means uh, you know uh, values that will inspire you those values are not there in society and therefore the society is meant to die it meant for instance uh, that all the characters in the novel had one or other blemish and flaw for him all had to do with greed so you can uh, who whoever you meet in vanity fair is uh, has, has some kind of greed in him or her idleness they don't have any work to do snobbery they they look down upon others and and think of themselves very high this was supposed to be a sort of realism <coughs> providing portraits of the people as they were in reality so this is the point that i want to make that so far as vanity fair is concerned it is actually vanity fair the the the, the uh, uh, incidents that are depicted in the novel are depicted not in the, that kind of reality where you go and uh, empathize with people actually it's a fair people get together at 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 a, uh, in 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 large ground and and they are just moving about singing and dancing and uh, you know playing roles so most of the people in the in, in the novel are as if they were playing roles they were players they were actors and they were there to enjoy life and enjoy life as people enjoy life in a fair and uh, what is the crux of the fair uh, 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 where people dance and uh, sing that that is called uh vanity they, they have to show to others that they are enjoying and this is the best way for them to enjoy so this novel is a fair it talks about a fair the, the the central central truth of uh, the, this fair is vanity uh, s- s- uh, showing your inner hollowness and therefore it's a complete uh, you know abandonment of any any, any kind of uh, goodness that might be there in society that is not shown <coughs> The title Vanity Fair is taken from John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress written in the 17th century in an obvious sense the central character Rebecca or Becky Sharp is the novel's pilgrim so you have a pilgrim <laughs> now imagine uh, it, it's it's nothing but a satire that uh, Becky Sharp the, the the person who who is who is uh, at, at the center she is supposed to be a pilgrim where where would she go in fact she has, her, her, her path is very clearly Uh, shown here as hell she she'll go there and in fact why should she go to hell because hell is already there in england so therefore the novel comes back uh, and it's a circular kind of a novel where this thing happens now uh, i'll tell you uh, towards the end of the discussion uh, certain aspects of uh, uh, you know the, this character uh, becky sharp uh, has uh, been a uh, 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 friends with uh, a person called emilia and emilia is nice she is good 
and uh, she wants to help uh, you know, uh, Rebecca or, or, or Becky Sharp. So she takes her along from from the from the school uh, after finishing the education, and she settles the, settles her in her own family. But Becky Sharp comes there, and she uh, falsely uh, 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 pretending as if uh, falls in love with uh, 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 her friend's uh, brother. And uh, she uh, abandons him as soon as uh, uh, th th there is an occasion. Then she has another affair, and uh, then she wants to cheat on her own friend, uh, uh, and uh, and has an affair with with, with uh, the, the, the friend's husband. And there also she is not happy. Then she leaves that place and goes elsewhere. So she is changing people. She is changing friends, and each each friend she changes well deserves it. So Becky Sharp towards the end he doesn't have anything good. And uh, she is a poor girl, and then people start taking advantage of her. So in the process, she also gets destroyed herself. So you will see that uh, since it's a vanity fair, the novel is about a society where vanity rules. Therefore, nobody, good or bad, intelligent or foolish, can ever survive and be happy in it. So that's the kind of uh, a picture of 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 a black, uh, the, the picture of uh, you know darkness that is shown in the novel. And uh, we have a novel in English then in the 19th century that shows the the the, the, the truth about uh, about the Victorian society, uh, a kind of critique uh, that has, of course, an outline somewhere uh, of shine, but that shine is not there exactly in the novel. So uh, we come to the end of the discussion, and I say that uh, Vanity Fair should be uh, interpreted in terms of the message that is hidden in the. Title itself, and that uh, if you compare uh, *Pilgrim's Progress*, the 17th century writing, uh, with this novel, then you'll find that they actually form one kind of a whole. Uh, the Vanity Fair will not allow the pilgrim to reach his destination at all, and here the destination is to be reached not by a male, but by a woman. Thank you.